Let me find that. The Rebbe Marash. The Rebbe Marash was the fourth Rebbe of Chabad. He lived shorter than any of the Rebbe's. He passed away at, I think, at the age of 48. And in some ways, he was the most mysterious of all of them. A lot of his uh, Hasidut is very, very wonderful, very amazing. <clears throat> and a lot of it is very understandable. You understand? It's the Rebbe Marash. So here's, here's a story about the Rebbe Marash. There's a lot of stories which are told about him. But here's one story. Once he was driving, he used to go out regularly with his, his driver, his way. And he used to go for uh, what seemed to be just like a uh, a, 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 a two teal, like a, a, how do you say, a, a, a journey, a, a, to, just to drive around aimlessly, it seemed, you know, and just you know, to clear his head or whatever, but it really wasn't that. It, and, Two examples I'll give you. One example is, is that they stopped once at a town. The Rebbe Marash got out. The Rebbe Marash was very impressive. He looked very impressive. They say he looked very much like the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. <clears throat> the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe was also a very handsome, very beautiful person. Is, is, anyway, so he got out. And when he got out, all the people in this town, it was a small town, they all bowed down to him. They got out and they saw him and they all bowed down. And he was together with his son or whatever. And they said, what is this? Well, what is this? He said, what do you want? It says in the Torah, bracha, that the Jewish people will be a blessing for all the world. These people see that we're a blessing. So they're bowing down. Bowing down. Them. Okay. The story I wanted to tell you was like this. And the Rebbe, on one of these journeys that he was taking, seemingly aimless journey. So he told his driver, to stop in front of this uh, a farm. So he stopped in front of the farm, uh, his farmhouse, a, a little hut, whatever it was. And he knocked on the one side, and there were these children that were there. I think their mother was also there. She was in the corner. And Jewish, Jewish people, there was a mezuzah on the door. Oh, Paul, you came at exactly the right time. I'm, I'm telling a story about the Rebbe Marash, Rebbe Shmuel. <clears throat> So once he he used to take journeys in his uh, in his uh, in his uh, chariot. He had a very fancy, you know, very fancy chariot. He, the things he used the, the, the very opulent, rich garments he used to wear and things. <clears throat> so he's the, he told his driver to stop in front of this like house, whatever little the hut, and he went in and there was a a um, a woman and her. Two, three children, small children. <clears throat> so he said, Jewish people, there was a mezuzah on the door. So he said, children, I would like to say psalms. Will you say psalms with me? So they said, sure. They took, they brought books of psalms. And they sat and they sat with the Rebbe. And they said psalms for like, you know, five, ten minutes. And the Rebbe waited and he said, um, let's say again. So he said psalms again for another for a few minutes, and then the Rebbe left. I, I think I have the story right. And he left, and he came back, and he said, "I want to say Psalms a third time." And the third time, they all sat together, and the Rebbe was saying Psalms. And when he said Psalms, it was very, how do you say, deep, genuine, emotional. <clears throat> I mean, a lot of the Psalms are King David expressing his pain and anguish. <clears throat> to God that he's being pursued by his enemies and that they're trying to kill him. And the prayers are very genuine. And also these prayers are part of the Torah. Amazingly, it's not just his personal, you know, he was a great poet and he just, you know, sang about his, you know, the, 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 the troubles of the world and etc. No, he was, these are part of the Torah. So he said these once, twice, three times. <clears throat> and then he left. And then he left God and go, no. The mother and her children had absolutely no idea what was going on. You know, why, why, why the Rebbe was a great, great, very great person. Stopped in this house to say Psalms, say once, say a couple of Psalms. I couldn't understand it. Later that evening, the father came home. <clears throat> their father, the father delayed coming home. They couldn't figure out why. <clears throat> and the um 
he, the father came home and he said what an ordeal he had just been through. But that's why he came back late. He was all disheveled and all tired. And <clears throat> what happened? <clears throat> it so happened that the um, the the Balabayat that he was working for, the person that he was working for, decided he wanted to kill him. So he ran after him with a hatchet, whatever it was, and he decided he was going to kill him, the, the, the Gentile that he was working for. <clears throat> so he ran and he hid. He hid. Either that that they were being attacked by non-Jews. could be that's what happened. They were being attacked where he was working, being attacked by non-Jews. And so he was attacked and he ran away and he hid, he hid in, in a, uh, a haystack, a big haystack. And the non-Jew was looking around for him. The, the Jews were looking around for him. And they couldn't find him. <clears throat> he hid in the haystack and he was hoping that they wouldn't. And the, 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 this non-Jew was right over him. He could hear them talking. They had dogs, I think, whatever it was. Anyway, he could hear them talking. And miraculously, they didn't sense that he was there. And afterwards, the, one of them yelled out, I saw the Jew. He's somewhere around here. He has to be somewhere around here. And they looked, and again, they passed right by where he was. <clears throat> and they didn't notice that he was there. He was hiding. And finally, one of them took a pitchfork. And he started pitchfork, or it was his gun with his bayonet, whatever, and stabbed into the, the haystack where he was. <clears throat> and um, it just, the, the, the blade just missed him, you know, by fractions of an inch each time. <laughs> miraculously, and then they said he must not be here, we don't know what happened to him, maybe we made a mistake, and they left. <clears throat> so I'm not sure in the story if the Rebbe Marash came back to this house or not. I'm sorry that I've, I've forgotten so many details, but the main essence of the story I remember. And anyways, they made a calculation exactly when this was, what time of the day, and it ended up that the time of the day was exactly when the Rebbe read the Psalms three times. So somehow or other, the Rebbe sensed that this Jew was in danger. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. And exactly when he was in danger and how he was in danger. And he also sensed that what would save him was if the children said Psalms. So from this, we see several things. First of all, what a Rebbe is. Like we just finished learning. Cared about the details. <clears throat> about all the little details. Put a tremendous effort into saving this person. And he also knew that somehow or other, with the power of Psalms saying, to heal him saying Psalms, the power of Psalms, especially when it's said by children, is immense. And so we see that the Rebbe Marash <clears throat> like it, I told the first story that it says, hey, bracha, that he was a blessing. It was a blessing. And first of all, he was a blessing for the Jew. And it was also a blessing for the non-Jews that wanted to kill him. If they would have killed him, it wouldn't have been good for them. But there would have been repercussions, spiritual repercussions <clears throat> for what they did. So that's the idea of today's special day. It's the day that the fourth Rebbe of Chabad was, was born. And we can't let it go by without mentioning that the slogan that was of the fourth Rebbe of Chabad was L'Chathchila a Reber. That some people say that you should meet problems head on, and if it doesn't work, then you should try to go around. And then if that doesn't work, then just ignore the problems totally and just jump over them. A Reber, go over the problems. And I say L'Chathchila a Reber, that from the beginning, don't meet the problems head on and don't try to make tricks and go around. L'Chathchila, jump over the problems. Forget that there's obstacles. Forget the disruptions. Just do what you have to do if it's good and ignore the obstacles and you'll see that the obstacles will disappear. Have a good day, a good Shabbos with Mashiach now and we'll see each other, God willing, on Sunday. Sunday. Sunday at 8.15 in the morning. Shalom of God bless you all. See you all. Shalom. See you with Mashiach now. Mashiach immediately.